but the, the path of light was a translation of two of the most important documents which have long known to be important documents but nobody had really translated them properly and this is what the job that he set out to do he was the first person to properly translate the cuneiform after Samuel Noah Kramer and what he did with the Coptic um, text of the Askew and Bruce Codices which part of which is more famous as the Pistis Sophia he, this is the teaching, Jesus' teaching to his inner circle of disciples which included both men and women where Mary Magdalene and his mother were playing key roles in asking questions. Salome was there as well and, and it was very clearly uh, advanced teaching reserved for people on the transmigration of a soul, journeys yes, of a soul. It dwelt with spiritual regions um, and also how the masters have always taught the same thing the spiritual masters and what it was like for the soul to travel beyond this life um, in other words he gives them a glimpse of the future its real value is that it's, it's witnessed as actually recorded by right. the disciple scribes Matthew, Philip and Thomas three mm -hmm. of the most important people in terms of later Christianity and witnessed and um, recorded by them which was a uh, a basic means of authorizing an important document under Hebraic law. And so this is a primary source um, um, of knowledge of what Jesus was actually saying. That's the most important primary source. And the interesting thing was that Jesus was teaching what was being taught in all the ancient mystery schools and druidic colleges and academies of that time, Alexandria in Greece and particularly in Britain, which would have been, in my, our view, my research view, a, um, a, a key refuge, if you like, of the, the great Bronze Age culture, the Golden Age. Of course, um, if, if it didn't chime with what was, as um, Edmund said, what was accepted then as the, um, as the religious, the best religious ex instruction, you would simply have to believe that the Copts was speaking the truth. It is not, you don't hear Jesus speaking, they are recording what was written down at another time. So um, you do have to just keep that in mind unless you feel sure that this is exactly the same thing that they've all taught. Well this is, the, the, there is other work from the Greek philosophers and Pythagoras who was said to be a druid um, and we have the mystery schools, we have so much more information. Mm. All that information, you see, Christians and Druids um, were persecuted by the Romans because the Romans had very good reasons to do it. They, they had a totally different system of law and order. Mm. Uh, the Druid system and the old system was in the public ownership, if you like, of land or the community ownership of land, but distributed and organized by the king and his advisors. Uh, through the old city-state system, which were the laws of Anu and Enil. So we're going right back in time and seeing that still surviving among the Druid communities before Christianity. Okay. And Jesus clearly, as some people say, Jesus was a Druid, because at that time that was the predominant uh, educational culture, and all young men who went to school uh, at the time of Jesus would have finished their education uh, if they wanted to pass all the exams and do their 20 years of training they would have been required to go to Britain to a Druidic Academy of some sort and do that training in Britain. And of course it's, it's, it's told by some people that Jesus did travel to Egypt, to um, India. Um, in other words, he was, um, he, he was accomplished in, in, te in his learning. He was a man of the world in as much he was a Nazarene Jew and what some people describe as a westernized Nazarene Jew and there was a, a terrific connection with his family who were uh, um, been for several generations have been so closely involved in the metals trade and particularly Britain and their relations in Britain because many of the people uh, in Britain are right the way across from South Wales to Yorkshire were the Cumric people who had immigrated from uh, the Near East from the area of Samaria and Palestine to Britain over time. I think it's worth just putting in here 
that um, it's a misconception that his father, Joseph, was a carpenter. He was a rabbi or a very learned man who practiced the craft, which was more of a spiritual teaching. Um, the, the phrase they've translated is ho tecton, and it means master of the craft, a master of the craft. Um, now the translators thought, now what are the crafts? <laughs> and they chose carpenter for some reason, but um, it gives a, a completely wrong picture of the family. They weren't tradesmen in that sense, or craftsmen in that sense. They were highly uh, sophisticated teachers, the rabbis, and um, they also married, that's another point, but Sir Lawrence Gardner talks about that, he, he describes all this so clearly, and our misconceptions are based on ignorance. We didn't know the Jewish laws, we didn't realize what the um, traditions were, so we've got quite the wrong end of the stick over a lot of things like the virgin birth. It, it sounds to me as if Sir Lawrence is right. Well, that's right. I think that the, we now have a terrific body of evidence to show that the top Vatican um, historians, Baronius in particular, who followed them um, from Polidor, Polidor Virgilio, who did a history of Britain. He was the Pope's tax collector, and when he came to collect taxes in Britain, he did a history of Britain for Henry VII. And in that history of Britain, he explained that the first church and the Christianity started